British Gas, proud sponsors of the British swimming teams. Hello everyone, I'm Lisa Leyland. I'm here for the British Gas Swimming Championships 2011. There are three more sessions of finals at this year's British Gas Swimming Championships and the first, which is about to start, includes another 12 events. The men's 100 metre freestyle blue ribbon contest was decided last night. This evening, it's the turn of the women. European champion Francesca Halsell, clearly not 100% after the ankle surgery, is going to have to call on all her courage and experience to outsmart her opponents if she wants to embrace the top podium spot. Hoping to derail Halsell is Amy Smith, fastest qualifier who was runner-up last year. James Goddard will be fully energised in tonight's 200m backstroke after his golden performance in the 200m individual medley. The current Commonwealth Games champion looked extremely comfortable in the semis and it will take a monumental swim from his nearest rival to deny him victory. Chris Walker Hebben is expected to be his closest challenger. Hebben ended the Commonwealth final in fourth position. Great Britain over the years have had an impressive tradition in international breaststroke swimming. And in the men's and women's 200 finals tonight, Michael Jameson and Stacey Tad will be teeing themselves up for the double. Jameson, who sealed silver in the Commonwealth Games, starts in lane four. And also in this medal contest is Andrew Willis and British record holder Chris Gilchrist. These two fill fourth and fifth places respectively in New Delhi. Tad goes into her medal clash as fastest qualifier, but European 400m individual medley champion Anna Miley has the quicker PB and will be hoping to achieve a finishing spot one place higher than her silver last year. In the morning's multi-classification 200m individual medley heats, world record holder Sasha Kindred recorded a qualification time for this summer's Europeans, as did Claire Cashmore and Louise Watkin. Kate Gray went close, all four are in action again tonight. Four semi-finals are also to be decided, each have their own spicy ingredients. Cashmore lines up for the run now, down her private channel of water. 2.01.04 for the split time. Through the 15 metre marker, and it's Cashmore bringing the field back. Still second, one lane up in three, looking good is Gray. Fourth at the moment, down here in lane five, is Louise Watkin from the city of Salford, coached by Robin Brew. 15 metres to go. Remember, the time will be matched against the world mark for their respective classification to score the points. Watkins coming through strongly in the closing stages, but Cashmore takes the race finish on the touch. Yeah, Natalie, it's your second gold medal of the week. You must be pretty pleased with that performance. Yeah, yeah, I'm really pleased with that. It was a really good swim for it. I did, um, I went 15 this morning, so it was uh, really, really impressive. I'm really pleased with it. Looking for the wall and the turn. Bridge, where he has been throughout the event, turns first and lines up for the concluding run to the wall. Here he comes. Bridge it is. Just wiping away the meters here with consummate ease. Good swimming here, five-star performance then by Jack Bridge of Preston. But it's all about that time matched against the world record for your disability. So we'll have to see just how near he is to the mark in the S10. Well ahead of the rest, a country mile ahead of his nearest challengers. Here he comes, Bridge, looking for the wall. See what the time's gonna be for him, Bridge's time. 2.23.88, good point 7.60, but i got a feeling that's going to be shaded as the rest are coming in now. There it is, 934 points then for Kindred. It's actually your second gold for this week. You must be pretty pleased with that. Yeah, yesterday I only had to do one length, so I thought today oh, I tired me out. But I'm happy with the time, happy to do the European qualifying time, so looking forward to Berlin. And it's Hulsell second by four one hundreds to Amy Smith. They're going head to head here now for the top spot. Who's going to embrace the top spot on the podium at the end of this? Hulsell really digging deep in lane five. Both watching each other, 15 metres to go. Amy Smith in four, Halsell in five. Stroke for stroke they are, coming into the final five. Amy Smith looks as though she's gonna take it on the touch, so close. Halsell takes it, 55-01.
Francesca, a qualifi qualification for Shanghai. Congratulations. Thank you. That's what I came here to do, and I managed to do it. So I'm really happy with myself, and it was a good race between me and Amy, but I got a lot of pride on the line in the 100 freestyle, so I had to make sure I gave it my best. Distancing himself from the rest. Great classy swimming here then by Goddard. Another stellar performance by the backstroke specialist as he turns and lines up the final 50. So James Goddard looking to add a gold medal to the one he won last night in the 200 IM. Coming well clear of the field now. Goddard's Commonwealth record as a matter of interest set in Delhi is 155.58. As he's coming up to the black marker, 15 metres to go. Look at the contest behind then for the bronze and silver. Heben in lane three is coming under pressure by the swimmer in lane seven. That's Mohammed. But here comes Goddard. Goddard touches now in a finishing time, 157.08 to get gold. What about silver? It really was close. Silver going to Mohammed. Our second gold of the week and a qualification for Shanghai. Congratulations. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's always a nervous time coming to the trials because, you know, you just want to make the team and uh, put in some solid performances, uh, which I've done this week. And uh, I'm pretty pleased, actually. Well, blink and you could miss it. One length of the pool. Look out for Sean Harkin in lane four. Plymouth Leander, coached by Dave Haller, quickest into this uh, semi-final with 27.94 in the qualification, just shy of a lifetime best. Good start as well by Harkin, also right alongside her, looking pretty powerful as well. He's Vertigans of Plymouth Leander in three, but I reckon he could be lane six. Well, they're all in the hunt here, four, five and six. But semi-final number one goes to Harkin in lane four, 27.62. So Rachel Kelly in lane four, who attends the Royal Wolverhampton School, comes from Eccleshall, and she was fourth in the 100. So now setting out on the journey to get into the final and looking to try and nail the quickest qualification time. Harkin went 27.62 in semi-final number one, and so if she wants block four, Kelly's got to beat that time. Looking pretty strong as well as she comes up to the wall. Let's just have a look at the time here for Kelly. Kelly touches out on 27.43, and that is the quickest of the two semis. Well, same drill as the women that have just gone. They're looking to make their way into tomorrow's final. Owen Morgan of Box Hill in lane four. 22.99 in qualification. Cracking start here by Morgan. Morgan has really blazed his way off the blocks. He's the Welsh record holder on 22.85. He set that mark in Sheffield. Well, he's not going to surrender the lead. Let's have a look at his finishing time. 22.69 for Owen Morgan to win the first of the semi-finals. Now then Adam Brown in lane four, already with one gold medal in his pocket from this meet, having won the 100 metres. Hoping, of course, to nail the sprint double. Simon Burnett, the British record holder from Windsor in lane five, going with him. But it's the better start here by Brown of Hatfield, coached by Nick Juba. And Brown really is uh, turning on the style here. Coming up to the touch, let's have a look at his finishing time. 22.40 for Adam Brown to win semi-final number two. And uh, we mustn't discount Miley in lane six, who is the medley specialist. Renshaw in five is looking the stronger, though, here as she's setting her stall out for a pitch at the silver. Bath it is coming up to the turn. She's on the sharp end of the race here. Tad it is, 150.28. Renshaw is in the hunt here for the silver. And on the far side, Kate Hutchinson, Loughborough University, starting to come through to challenge for the bronze. Ding Dong finish this then, up to the uh, 25 marker. Tad it is, still ahead. Renshaw in five, he's trying to limit the gains here of Tad, but Tad has done enough work in the early stages to maintain the lead. Coming up to the five meter marker, here she is. Tad, the 100 champion, is gonna take gold medal number two. Tad does, she takes gold. Silver going to Renshaw and the bronze to Hutchinson. Stacey, congratulations. How's it feel to get the breaststroke double there? Absolutely brilliant. I'm so happy with that. Um, I went faster than last night, um, which was which I wanted to do. Shame I just missed the time, but um, I'm still really pleased. So away we go here with semi-final number one of the men's 100 metres butterfly and one or two young Tyros in the semi, hoping to upstage the old firm. We'll see how they get on. Good stage, a good start. I should stay say by three and four down there. Barrett in three, Mare in four. We've got the British record holder, Michael Rock, swimming in lane six. 
and he's leading. So Rock reflecting his uh, experience. 24-6-0, the split for Rock. Then that British record uh, holder, 25-1-6 for Mayor City and Newcastle Lions second. Remember, we are looking for the quickest eight times to make it through to the final. So Rock really turning the screw here and stamping his authority over the rest of the field. As much as to say, if you want to win this title, pal, you're going to have to really go to stop me. Rock hits the wall in a time of 52.88. Now then, we're just going to monitor the performance here of Anthony James of Plymouth Leander in lane four. Remember the time he wants, uh, he's got a beat, he's 52.88 set by Michael Rock if he wants to be the quickest qualifier. And James, remember, upstage Rock at the Commonwealth Games when he got a silver. James' lifetime best, only half a second shy of the British record held by Rock. Up to the wall and the turn. And it is James there, first on 24.98. Second, Doolan, City of Salford, 25 one, two, 17, 100 shy of the time of James. Now then, coming through that red marker with 25 metres to go. Still lane four, Anthony James at Plymouth Leander. Just got his nose in front here. Remember the time to beat. If he wants to be the fastest qualifier, it's 52.88. Here comes James now, up to the touch. James's time, 53.50 to win semi-final number two. So this youngster certainly not afraid of reputations. He's not phased at all by the fact that she's got medal winners here then from uh, the Europeans and the Worlds. She's mixing it well in their company. And it does look to me, in fact, that's right, Holman lost her goggles actually on the opening 50. She's dismissed the problem as they're on their way down now for the final 50 now. Simmons still leading here. Spofforth now showing her great strength. Remember, she was eighth at the end of the first 50, Spofforth. And now look at this, really beginning to ratchet the pace up as she comes up onto the shoulder of Holman. Simmons is still ahead, who's now moving into cruise mode because she's doing just enough to get through to the final. And Simmons just cruising up to the wall. Touches out there on 2.14.05. Good race then between this brace of swimmers that turn first, but now they've got company because Rachel Leafley in lane three from Loughborough University is coming through into the shake-up. So three are in touch for the, the honour of winning the semi. It's all about the time they're going to record. Still uh, proud. It's close, though. Proud first. And second, Leafley, who's now upstaged man. So now proud, looking to put down the marker here to go into the final as the fastest. Time she's got a beat is 2.14.05, set by Simmons, if she wants lane four. Clear body length ahead now of her nearest challengers. It was stroke for stroke over in three and four. Let's have a look at Proud's time. Here it is. Proud's time, 2.11.26. That's the quickest of the two semis. Let's not forget that Jameson in lane four has already won the 100 here. And I tell you what, he's beginning to look good as well now in lane four. The Commonwealth silver medalist, Jameson in lane four going well. And also Willis from Bracknell in lane three. He was fourth at the Commonwealth Games, uh, Willis from Bracknell. Now then, 50 to decide this. This is going to be a cliffhanger. Gilchrist is still leading, being pressurised now by Jameson and Bracknell coming in the shake-up as well. Well, this is a five-star performance and it's lane six. Gilchrist down here in front of me, personifying determination. Virtuoso performance here by Gilchrist, but he's under pressure now because it's Jameson in the middle. Jameson's found the best till last. Coming up to the touch, let's have a look at this. Jameson takes it. 210.42 to take the gold medal. Michael, great time. Uh, qualification, must be pleased. Yeah, delighted. Um, took a lot of confidence from the 100 the other day. I knew it was going to be a close finish again the other. The tactic was to go out a bit harder, but 
I think subconsciously I was trying to save something for that last 50. British Gas, proud sponsors of the British swimming teams.